implies some mixed costs and you're probably wondering where's the black screen well we'll get to it but uh, this is uh, an accounting course we need to be flexible and learn a whole bunch of skills so what I've done is I've replicated on the screen here you can see activity level and electrical costs I've replicated the example you're going to find in your textbook when you get to mixed costs this is in chapter 3 you'll find this data set on page 76 and it's listed for the months in question January through to December and you're probably saying I don't see the other months no but I want to show you something here if you click on January and you see this little square at the bottom if you move your mouse over it it turns into a plus sign if you drag your mouse down to the bottom look what happens Excel knows that you're filling in the months sequentially and there you go as opposed to typing everything in so here's our activity level here are our costs what we want to do is we want to draw what's called a scatter plot so what we can do is we can draw a straight line this way a vertical line and a horizontal line and then plot each point on or we can just do this and in Excel you click up here on charts and look at this one it says scatter plots so you click on scatter and the first one here it says marked scatter plot click on that isn't that beautiful look how easy that is so look how nice and straight that line is and it doesn't quite get at the uh, zero zero intercept so we know that there is some intercept component which means there's a fixed cost but since as the activity level rises we have a linear relationship we must have a variable component so what we'd like to do is we'd like to draw a line through this well in Excel that's very easy see these quick this uh, where I'm pointing up here it says a uh, chart quick layouts and there's your little line here click on this one and you choose the one you want this one here has a line drawn through it so we click this there we go there's our line through them so we can see a nice linear line and the data seems to fit that line quite well so let's take this chart and work with it well here is our chart that we had in Excel I've blown it up a little bit and let's work with this and we'll figure out uh, how to do the high-low method to estimate what the fixed cost component is and what the variable cost component is but first a little bit of housekeeping shall we we have to label our axis we're gonna label this Y and we're gonna label this axis X when we label something Y we typically call this the dependent variable dependent variable and the X is called the independent variable and what we're seeing here is that we have kind of a linear relationship well not kind it's very very close to a linear relationship so we can make a note it's linear and you'll recall in the previous video when we talked about mixed costs mixed costs typically have a linear or a linear function of the form y the dependent variable cost equals some fixed cost component some intercept plus some variable cost component times the independent variable y equals a plus bx and this works if we have a linear relationship so this is why we do a scatter plot to start with to figure out number one do we have a linear relationship if we don't this y equals a plus bx won't work we could have something that looks like this where we plot something where our costs tend to look fixed for a while then at some point they begin to become variable so we have this kind of graph we could have something that looks like this where after a certain point costs get way out of control so that it's it's a quadratic or curved linear or we could plot it and find that it looks like this well, suddenly we have no relationship whatsoever so the plotting itself really is just to check to see if this relationship will work for us it does that's all we need to know it will work for us so let's have a look at uh, let me just extend this a bit remember we said that B is the slope of the line well that means we can write it like this a plus and slope is the change in Y divided by the change in X 
So the change in y, so if we're doing it uh, sort of like a linear approximation, it would be the change in y, sorry, the change in y, and this is the change in x. So the change in y to change in x times x. So this b is really just this, right? So let's look at the high-low method and see what we get here. We'll write it out, the high-low method. And the high-low method, again, works if we have a linear relationship. And what we do is we find the highest level and the lowest level of activity. In other words, we're not concerned with y, we're concerned with down here. So we want to find the point that has the lowest level of x and the point that has the highest level of x. Well, this one clearly here is the lowest point of x. So as we move out from the origin, this is the first one we see. So this will be x1, and that means that this point over here will be y1. And this point up here is the highest point of x, so this will be x2, and that means that that will be y2. So what we need to do is figure out, well, what number, remember the Excel spreadsheet, I laid out all the numbers, what number belongs to x1? We find that it is 190. And when we look beside 190, the month in which we use 190 units, uh, we find that the cost in that month was 1773. So this point here, this xy coordinate, represents 1901773 if we're writing it out in xy coordinate. This x2 corresponds to 3610. This y2 corresponds to 8100. So this point right here is 3610, 8100. That's our xy coordinate for here. So the high-low method, if we extend this out, equals a plus the change in y. We know is y2 minus y1, the change in y over the change in x, x2 minus x1, x. So this here is, we've just expanded b. So now we're in a position to solve it because we have our x and our y coordinates. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We'll do it over here, a plus, and on the top, y2 is 8100, minus y1 is 1773, over x1, uh, Sorry, x2 is 3610 minus 190x, which equals a plus uh, 6327 over 3420x, which equals a plus 1.85x. Now, you're probably saying, why didn't you just write out 1.85x? Why did you go through the steps? Here's why. I want you to get used to going through the steps because if you're answering a question on an exam and you just give me this and this is wrong, I can't even give you part marks for the trip getting there. You may have gotten some of it right and just made a calculation error with your calculator here, in which case I'll be very forgiving. But if you were wrong from the start, well then, you know, you were wrong from the start. So there's our y. y equals a plus 1.85x. And you're probably saying, so what do we do with that? Well, we know the slope is 1.85, which means we know our variable cost is 1.85. So we incur a cost of $1.85 per x for every x. But what's our a? We don't have our a yet. Well, if you look at this very carefully, we actually do have our a. Look over here. We have a coordinate, one, our x and our y coordinate. So here's our y, 1773 equals a plus 1.85. And here's our x, 190. Doesn't take much to see that we can simply just solve for a, right? So a will equal 1421 50. Here I just went right to the answer, but that's okay. So now we have a. So we have our full function. Y, the cost, will equal our fixed cost, which is $1,421.50, plus our variable cost per unit times the number of units. There we go. Using the high-low method, we have come up with our, um, our formula for figuring out the cost of anything. Let's see if this works out very nicely. Let's just see. 
if x were 3,000. So let's say that our cost is 3,000. Or sorry, our units are 3,000. What's our cost? If this works, we should, if we follow the 3,000 up here, we should end up within this linear, like we shouldn't be way up here or way down here, but we should be in here somewhere. So let's find out. So y equals 14, 2150 plus 1.85 times our 3,000, which will equal 6,971.50. 6,971, I forgot the one. So there's 7,000. So we're just a little below that. So if we draw this line out and we draw the 3,000 line up, we're right about here. So does that make sense? It certainly does. That is a mixed cost. That's the high-low method. And don't just say, okay, I get it now. You gotta go to the exercises. You gotta try some of the exercises and do it yourself. This is actually very simple. And look at this, you also picked up a few Excel tips along the way. Isn't life beautiful?